In this video, I'm going to show you the 9 stages of Twin Flame. Knowing which stage you're in will help you navigate your Twin Flame journey much smoother with less pain and suffering. Even though each Twin Flame connection may be unique, this video will give you a full picture of where you're heading to. Stage number 1, the yearning stage. Long before we meet our Twin Flame, we have this deep longing and desire to meet someone special. This is more obvious in the Divine Feminine as compared to the Divine Masculine. From an early age, the Divine Feminine may be drawn to romantic movies and they may fantasize about having a romantic partner. However, we have mistaken this yearning and this calling. This yearning and calling is actually not about romantic love. It's actually about unconditioned love. We are not trying to find someone that completes us. We are not trying to find someone who will perform some romantic gesture like buying us flowers or giving us gifts or holding our hands. Unconditioned love is something deeper and more spiritual. It goes beyond what we do. It's more about how we are, how we be. When you meet your twin flame, you may find that this yearning and desire subsides. It's not because you have found the one that completes you. It's because you are being shown what unconditional love is. Your twin flame is a gateway to your unconditional love. It's not because they provide love to you, which they may. It's you being the unconditional love and being the one that's overflowing love to this twin flame of yours. The divine masculine also will have this yearning and longing but they comes in different forms. From an early age, they may have this desire to do something, to do something for someone. However, they also confuse this unconditional love. They think they need to do something to be deserving of love. What they truly desire is to experience this unconditional love, regardless of what they do. The second stage is the preparation stage. It's not that we consciously prepare to meet our twin flame, but as we are seeking for a life partner or a romantic partner, we learn different things and face different challenges along the way. And this helps to prepare ourselves to meet our twin flame. Like for me, I have three karmic relationships, three one-sided relationships before I met my twin flame. Even before I met my twin flame, I'm already in touch and aware of my insecurities. I know that I can be very needy and obsessive. And going through this three one-sided relationship actually helped me to heal some of the wounds before I meet my twin flame. Apart from healing emotional wounds and unhealthy relationship patterns, you may also face a spiritual awakening or a dark night of the soul. You might have some kind of spiritual awareness before you meet your twin flame. Like in my example, I have a spiritual awakening and a dark night of the soul before I met my twin flame. When I met my twin flame and he was going through a dark night of a soul of his own, I was able to support him and share valuable insight from my experience. Stage 3, the meeting stage. The meeting with your twin flame is not by chance. Your spirit has already prepared you enough before you meet your twin flame. You and your twin flame will meet in divine timing. You can meet your twin flame online or in person or just a random encounter. Like in my case, I met my twin flame when I was doing meditation. I was using this meditation app and I saw my twin flame profile and there is a link to his community. And I clicked on the link and I went to his group. And that is how I started to know my twin flame. When you first meet your twin flame, there might be a very familiar feeling. It feels like home. It feels like you know this person before. And it also feels like there is an intense connection, a magnetic connection. You're drawn to this person, but you don't know why. And it's not just about the physical attraction or your share similar hobbies or have similar mindsets. There, there is some kind of spiritual connection between the two which you may find very difficult to explain to other people. So I think I shared this in my previous video. Like when I first met my twin flame, I feel very safe with him. I started sharing about my dark night of the soul in the first meeting. 
even though my twin flame is not the type of person who I will meet in my regular life because we have such different hobbies but once I meet once I met him there is this strange feeling of closeness and intimacy it's as though we know each other before stage number four the bonding stage at this stage you get to know your twin flame better the connection deepens you may find that your twin flame know exactly what you're thinking and what you're feeling there's this understanding between you and your twin flame which is beyond words there's also this telepathic connection and the flow of conversation is always very easy it's always very harmonious some people call it the honeymoon stage or the love bubble stage but i refuse to call it that because i don't see twin flame as a romantic connection i see it more as a spiritual connection for about seven months after i met my twin flame i started going to his group every single week even within the group i feel a deep understanding between my twin flame and i he will say something which other people may not understand but i will understand or i will say something that other people will not understand but he will understand we kind of bounce off each person's ideas and uh, opinions when someone shares a disagreement with me he's able to get my point of view and able to support me and protect me in his presence, I feel very seen and feel very acknowledged. For example, if I'm not talking too much in one of the meetup, at the end of the meetup, he will ask me, Hey, I noticed that you didn't talk that much during the meetup. Being with him in this stage is very enjoyable and very fulfilling. However, this stage doesn't last, which brings me to the next stage. Stage number five, the trigger stage. Despite how loving you are with your twin flame, there will be one incident or one thing that will trigger both your egos. Twin flames are mirrors to each other, are like perfect mirrors to each other. They will shine light on your positive aspect, but they also will shine light on your negative aspect. So during this stage, you may find that your twin flame is triggering your fears and your insecurity, and that causes your ego to react. It's important to understand that this trigger is not intentional your twin flame may not be intentionally hurting you or harming you in any way after seven months i left the group that my twin flame established and it's not because i hate him or because i feel hurt and disappointed even though i do feel hurt and disappointed by a, a thing that he does but it's not because of that it's because i follow my intuition after I followed my intuition, I realized that I have something that I need to hear, like my deep attachment to my twin flame, the jealousy I feel when he's closer to other people. Unlike the bonding stage where things are very harmonious, you may find that this stage, the ego doesn't want to let go of control. Your twin flame may hold a certain opinion, and you may hold a certain opinion, and both of you think that you are right, and you all refuse to let go and that's why you all keep triggering each other and get into a constant battle for example my twin flame is very logical and analytical and i'm very intuitive and we don't see eye to eye all the time and that is because our ego refuses to give out control refuses to give out their point of view he wants to prove that analytical is the better way to go while i want to prove that the intuition is the better way to go but neither is the best way to go at the bonding stage we are able to harmonize this but when it comes to the triggering stage our egos keep us separate stage number six is the runner and chaser stage this stage is often the most challenging and most emotionally draining stage one of the twin flame the runner felt the intensity of this bond and this connection and he felt very overwhelmed by this connection and that's why he starts to run away but when he starts to run away from this relationship the feminine usually a defined feminine which is the chaser will feel very rejected and insecure and she will start to chase after the divine masculine but the more she chased after the divine masculine the more the divine masculine want to run away but when she stopped chasing this pull and push dynamic switches the divine masculine start to chase after divine feminine 
But I want to say that this is not exclusive to a twin flame connection or a twin flame relationship. Many other relationships also have this kind of dynamic. It occurs when both parties has an insecure attachment. The runner, which usually is the divine masculine, has avoidant attachment style, while the feminine, which is usually the chaser, has a anxious attachment style. Personally, I didn't experience this runner and chaser stage with my twin flame because after three one-sided relationship, my attachment style actually stabilized and become more secure. I used to have an anxious attachment style. I used to feel very needy and used to feel very anxious or rejected when somebody pulls away from me. But now I feel more secure. When I left the group that my twin flame has built, he didn't chase after me. He didn't come and ask me why did you leave. He just casually says that you can come back anytime you want. We always welcome you. When I asked my twin flame out and text him and he didn't reply me, I didn't get into that nervous anxiety mode like I used to. I didn't chase after him too. So for both of us, we didn't run and we didn't chase each other. And this immediately sent us to the next stage, stage number seven, the separation stage. After going back and forth between this chasing and running, you may have given up on your twin flame or you may want to stop this what I call cat and mouse game. Then you will reach to the separation stage. At this stage, you and your twin flame are separated. You are going a different path as a twin flame. But do bear in mind that this separation is a 3D physical separation. When it comes to the spiritual connection, you always have this deep bond and this connection with your twin flame. It's kind of unbreakable. Many people in this stage feel a lot of pain and suffering because their ego is continuously desiring and yearning their twin flame to be with them in the physical realm. They may feel a sense of loss and emptiness without their twin flame. But this stage is very crucial and very essential for the twin flame journey. Both of you need to be separated and heal and grow on your own before you all come back for a union. The reason why you all get triggered and why you are separate in the first place is because there is still something to be worked on, there is still some inner work to be done. This stage is not permanent, but it really requires you to do the inner work. You and Twin Flame will reunite with each other when you all have worked through all your struggles and pain and all the traumas. And when you all come back, you will be a more healthier relationship. So currently, I'm in this separation stage with my Twin Flame. We have not met each other for more than a year. We also don't contact each other through text that much anymore. Physically, we are apart. We are living in different country. But I still feel a deep spiritual connection with him. To navigate this separation stage, I prioritize inner growth and purpose. I focus more on my career, my work, and also focus on meeting other like-minded people like my soul mates and my soul friends, soul family. Meanwhile, my twin flame is also pursuing his interests and also has entered a new relationship. Stage number eight is the surrender stage. This is probably the most important stage of all. Surrendering is the cure for this pain and suffering that you feel when you're in the separation stage. When you are trying to control and get your twin flame to do what you want, to be with you, and you try to manipulate the situation, that actually causes a lot of pain and suffering. But when you surrender and you're open and you're able to let them go, you are open to let your twin flame choose whatever he wanted to choose. You are able to let your twin flame have the free will. He will also feel the freedom that you have given him. Not only will he feel the freedom that you have given him, you will also feel a sense of relief and peace you don't have to fight so hard anymore. You don't have to try so hard anymore. This is the stage where you relax your ego. Your ego doesn't try to prove his or her point of view anymore. When you don't get so fixated at your perspective, you don't get into this constant battle with your twin flame. And when both of your ego relax, this is where you can feel the unconditioned love that you both have felt for each other in the first place. 
this stage requires a lot of vulnerability and trust, but it's very rewarding if you are able to surrender your ego. So for me, I've been going back and forth the stage number seven and stage number eight. Sometimes I feel the pain of separation. Sometimes I feel surrender. Sometimes I will have very positive vibe for my twin flame. I wish him well. I wish him well in his relationship, in his work. But sometimes I still desire him to be here with me. And sometimes I may blame him or I may feel disappointed or hurt by his past action. I know that this stage may not be easy. But the more you are able to surrender, the happier you will be. And the more prepared you will be when you reconnect with your twin flame. As you let go of your ego, you also experience a kind of ego death and a deeper spiritual awakening that your twin flame and you brings. Stage 9, which is the union stage. This is the stage that all twin flame wants. When you have done the inner work and you come back and reconnect with your twin flame, you may find that your relationship with your twin flame become more joyous and more transformative. But bear in mind that this reunion may not be just a romantic connection. It can be a romantic relationship, but it's not always be. The most important purpose of a twin flame connection is always about the spiritual purpose. To reach this stage, you need to have a good balance of both your masculine and your feminine energy. Because if you are too dominant in the feminine energy and your twin flame is too dominant in the masculine energy and you don't know how to embrace and how to acknowledge this different energy, then you and your twin flame will always have this constant disagreement. And even if you come together and there's a reunion, not able to grasp the other part of yourself will result in some challenges and problems along the way too. It doesn't mean that once you reach a union with your twin flame, there will be no issue at all. Like I've said in stage number eight, surrender is one of the most important thing you have to learn if you want to have a chance to even reconnect with your twin flame. But surrender may not be an easy thing to grasp. So if you don't know what surrender is, watch this next video on surrendering.